Today we'll be looking at Elegant Solutions. This first game is called Use Boxman, and this is a level late in the game where normally you would have platforms to walk on, but now they're all invisible. So clearly the brute force solution is to just keep running along, making mistakes, until you can eventually work out kind of where the paths are. But even when you do this, there's no guarantee that you'll make it to the end. In this case, the top right corner. So what the elegant solution involves is using your clones to test where all the gaps are and to help you figure out where all the upcoming platforms are. With a bit of careful aiming, you can determine exactly where everything is. And eventually, you can make it to the end. Now this is the very last puzzle in the game. To get out of this first section, you have to hit both of these two switches simultaneously. So when you jump up and throw out your clones, the timing can be a bit tricky. You might be working at this one for a while until you figure out that there's an elegant solution involved. As you can see, both switches are positioned pretty equally apart from each other, so shooting off two clones almost at once will get the job done. And now for the next part. The goal of the game is to reach that tiny little floating box in the bottom left corner, and this skull-like objects at the very bottom will kill you if you touch it. So naturally, you can use your clones to hit the switches for you, so you can eventually make it to that box. The problem with doing this is these switches are pretty complicated. The two switches on the top control two skulls, and there's one switch on the bottom that controls a big fat skull. And then, because of the boxmen, or the little clones running around, the timing that each one activates and deactivates can create some pretty complex patterns. It's pretty hard to predict when to go and when to stay, and you're, you'll be sitting here for a while thinking about where your opportunities are. Oh no! That is the brute force way of approaching this problem. And it might take you hundreds of tries before you get it. But here's the elegant solution. If you send down a clone, you can control all the switches yourself. In this game, called Jumpman, the color that your little character is in the bottom left corner determines what he can interact with. Now that he's black, I have to watch out for all the black enemies as I platform up to the top of the screen. In the bottom right, the exit is painted white, so I need to make sure I'm white before I get there. Now that I'm white, I have to carefully dodge all the white enemy elements to get to the bottom. And that's how you can easily meet the level. But the elegant solution involves using your other mechanics. Rotate. Once the screen is all the way flipped around, you can easily just jump to the goal. In this game called Red Remover, the point is to keep all the green elements and get rid of all the red elements. Each click counts as a move, so you want to try to beat a level with as few clicks as possible, like in this case. If I just open the top, the reds will kind of diffuse their way out from underneath all the other elements. You might have to click one more time to get them all out, and it's a much more elegant solution than clicking on all the blue elements. In this case, you can count the clicks. One, two, safely tucked green to a corner, and three, four. But there's a more elegant solution. By timing the green ball, you can successfully knock the red cube all the way off the top of the map. Because it falls off the map, we don't have to worry about clicking on it, and get, can get by with only three clicks. Very similar situation here. Bye.
By not clicking on the blue beam, we save ourselves a click. Let's look at this game for the DSi Cubs Engage. It's one of my personal favorites. Now the point of the game is to get the colored ball into the colored square, in this case blue, and I can use these arrow and ice tiles to my advantage. So without getting too particular about how to solve this game, or how to play this game, you slide around the various tiles in various ways, sometimes using balls to push other balls, and eventually you can reach the end. In this case, that took 17 moves, and the average is about 17, so I did pretty well. But there's a much more elegant solution that can get the job done much more efficiently. In a sort of an action game maneuver, I can slide the tiles just right so I can keep the ball at the top and make it to the end in only 5 moves. 5 compared to 17 is far more elegant. How about another game for the DSi? This is called Base 10, and it's our final example. In the puzzle mode of this game, you try to move as few tiles as possible in order to clear the board. In order to clear any amount of numbers, you have to line them up so that they add up to 10. So here, 2 plus 3 equals 5, plus 5 equals 10. So you tap them all in a row and they disappear. I can do the same setup here, 2 plus 3 plus 5. And now 5 plus 5 or 5 plus 5 on either end. I got the job done in 5 tile swaps. But that's not nearly elegant enough for us. So we can try it again. 1, 2, Three. Eliminate those. Four. Eliminate those, those, and those. Four moves. One move more efficient. But there's still a more efficient way. If I move that one, and I move those, I can clear the top and side simultaneously using a shared five. And just one more move to swap the twos and I got the entire board cleared in three moves. That is the most elegant solution for that puzzle.